So in this session, we are going to learn about if else statement. So if else statements really control the flow of your program. So for example, in certain scenarios, you want to do some condition checks before you want your code to execute. In those cases, you need to make use of if else statements. So to give you a simple example, let's say you want to rewrite a program in order to add two numbers and you are requesting user to enter two numbers. However, let's say user actually did not enter number, rather he entered a string. In that case, your program is going to give you error if you have not performed any condition checks. So it is always beneficial that you perform if condition check by seeing that the number which user has entered is actually a number. Now when you write if else statement, there is a concept of indentation. Here now you can see the syntax of if is very simple. Uh, you need to use if and followed by opening and close parentheses and inside that parentheses you need to give some condition check. So that condition check can be uh, like you want to check whether one number is equal to another number or certain condition is equal to certain other condition or things like that. So once you give that condition and after the closing bracket you need to use colon and then hit enter. Now once you hit enter you will notice that line is beginning from this position. It is not beginning from a start of this line and that is because of the indentation. In Python indentation is used to separate one block with another. So here whatever the piece of code which has written inside if condition is a separate block and it is only going to get executed whenever the if condition is true. And in case whatever is written inside if condition is false or not matching, in that case whatever is written inside if block is not going to get executed and whatever is written in the else block that is the one which is going to get executed. Now we do have something which is called nested if statement. So let's have a look in that. And before that hope I made indentation very clear. So basically this is one block and then we have another block which is for else statement. Now let's move on to nested if else statement. Now here you see that we have outer if statement and once uh, this statement is satisfied or this condition check is satisfied or it is true, in that case it is going to move to next piece of code and in the next piece of code again basically we are writing another if statement. Okay, so we have one if statement inside another if statement and that is called nested if statement. Now here understand the block. So whatever you have written inside first if block is called one first block and then you have some piece of code written inside second if block. Okay so that is going to be your second block. Now notice here that whatever the number of spaces you have given you need to make that consistent. If let's say here you give three spaces and for the next line you give four spaces or five spaces in that case you are going to get error that indentation is not proper. Okay, so we are going to see this when we are going to code some program. So hope until now everything is pretty clear. If you have any question, feel free to ask in Q&A section. I'll be more than happy to answer. Now let's move on to some hands-on session and let's write a program and understand this concept in a better way. So now I'm uh, back to Jupyter Notebook and here uh, hopefully I have made this already very clear. Now you understand that this is this space which you see in the beginning of second if statement is actually called indentation and similarly after else statement you see there is some leading spaces these are called indentation. Now let's write a program to perform division of two numbers. So in that case I'm going to uh, create variables which is called first number and then I'm going to create another variable which is called second number. And here we are going to ask users to enter numbers. So that's why I'm writing input statements. And before both of these input statements, we also want to print some message. So let's tell user to enter first number and enter second number. So user is going to enter two numbers and we are going to uh, do a division and going to return the result back to the user. division of this number is and then below we are going to show the result. So here what we need to do is first number and divided by second number. So here we are actually making use of arithmetic operator which we have learned in operator session. So this 
slash is denoting arithmetic operator which is division operator so now i'm going to press control enter and now it is asking for first number so let's enter a number let's enter 20 hit enter and then it is asking for second number i'm going to give 2 hit enter and now it is saying division of this number is now you saw we got error so this is again uh, same error which is saying that we are using operator on string okay because whatever number which we have received using input function these are being treated as a string so we need to do type casting let's do casting here so i'm going to convert it to int and now let's run this program again and going to enter 20 and 2 and this time we have the result now uh, let's execute this program again and see what can go wrong with this program so let's hit control enter again and this time let's say rather than giving number i actually entered some string and press enter and now you see that we have received some error what is happening is that we are trying to cast a string into integer and which is resulting in an error okay so rather than writing our program like this we should have done certain validation by using if statement and now i'm going to introduce if statement and here i'm going to write if and we are going to see if first number is numeric there is a method in string class which is called is numeric and this is basically going to give us true or false it is going to give us true if all the characters which are entered are number and it is going to give false if any of the character which is entered is non-numeric character okay so here what we are saying is that if whatever first number entered is numeric in that case we are going to execute second line and that is going to be another if statement which is if second number is numeric as well then only we are going to perform a division okay so here i'm going to write this division inside this block so now here what is happening is we have one if condition which is checking whether the first number which is entered is numeric or not if it is numeric it is going uh, to execute second piece of line and second piece of line is again another if condition which is checking that second number is also numeric or not and if it is numeric in that case only we are going to print this division okay let me also write this print message here okay now what is going to happen if second number is not a number okay or not a numeric in that case we need to write else statement corresponding to this if statement okay so now you notice this if and this else are beginning in the same block okay so here after else you need to give colon hit enter and here you can print a message that second number is not numeric okay so rather than printing division we are saying that second number is not numeric please run program again and enter numeric number and enter numeric okay now let's say what is going to happen if first number itself is not numeric we also want to print certain message in that case as well so i'm going to write another else statement and this time i'm going to write else statement here so this else statement is for outer if block so you can see this if is in sequence or aligned with this else statement okay so this else is only going to execute if this first statement is turns out to be a false statement so here we are going to write another print statement and going to say that first number is not numeric and now i'm going to remove whatever we have written here okay so now in this case you see we are performing validation and based on that only we are showing the result so let's hit control enter and let's see how it works and again one thing which i'm going to do here is i'm going to uh, take out this integer casting from here so we are receiving input from user 
and here once we made a check that whatever the number user has entered is numeric then only we are going to perform casting so you can only perform numeric operations when you have done casting to numeric or float data type so here we are doing casting for first number and inside this we are going to do casting for second number I'm sure this program uh, for a beginner it might look little bit complex but actually it is not complex it is very simple if you want to pause you can pause here and try to understand this program it is very simple so it is very logical as well we are actually taking one number and then we are doing a validation that whether the all the letters which user has entered is numeric or not if it is numeric then we are casting that number and assigning is back to the same variable and again for second number also we are doing the same thing and then we are doing first number divided by second number and printing the result to the user and if first number or second number is not numeric then we are printing these messages and asking user to run the program again so i'm going to run this program and let's see how it works so it is asking for first number i'm going to enter 20 now here we have received some error so let's see what is that error so the error which we have got it is saying that int object has no attribute is numeric so let's see what is happening okay so here basically we are performing second number dot is numeric and user has not entered a second number so uh, let's do a let's write one more statement here which is second number is equal to input so now let's run this program again and see what is the output which we get so it is asking for first number let's enter 20 now it is saying enter second number let's enter 2 and once we hit enter again we have got the output now let's run it again and in the first number let's give some uh, string so I'm going to give John hit enter and now you see that it has not proceeded further and it has given us the statement that first number is not numeric please run program again and enter numeric okay so it validated this statement and after that it understood that whatever user has entered is a non-numeric and that's why whatever was written inside this if block has not been executed and else block has been executed and we have received this statement as an output now let's run this again and for first number I'm going to gi uh, give numeric and then hit enter and for second number let's give some name and hit enter and now you see again we have not got the division what we have got is second number is not numeric please run program again and enter numeric okay so uh, that's how actually you are ensuring that you are doing some validation check before performing division now there is still one error in this case which I'm going to tell you and so let's do control enter and let's say first number which is entered is entered is 20 and let's say second number which is entered is 0 and what do you think is going to happen let's hit enter and see so here you saw it actually moved on to performing division and then once it was doing division it understood that division is performed by zero because as you know division by zero is not possible so we should have put one more condition by checking that whatever number which user has entered should be greater than zero okay so in that case what we could have done is we have put one more if statement inside this which is going to say or going to make sure that whatever the number which user has entered should be greater than zero so I leave it up to you in order to enhance this program and make sure that whatever possible validation is you have made sure that all of those validation is done before we make sure that this our program of division is bulletproof and it is going to work in all the conditions or all the scenarios. Again if there is any confusion or if you want to understand certain thing please feel free to write in Q&A section and I'll be more than happy to answer.